Welcome to this DaVinci Resolve Fusion node breakdown. Today's node is the Point Cloud 3D node. So we're gonna jump into Fusion and I've got a uh, quick camera track I did on this footage. So if you remember right, when we went over the camera tracker, it generated additional nodes once we uh, exported it. Once we go to this export and we exported what we wanted, it created uh, all these additional nodes. And one of the nodes it created was our point cloud. And what the point cloud is, is the point cloud generates null objects created by this camera tracker, which shows our tracking points. So that's these little pluses that you see within the uh, our track. This is the point cloud. Now on our point cloud node, we can change our style right here. And right now it's set to crosses. We can also change it to points and we can change the size of our little uh, point cloud style. We can lock it in the X and the Y and the Z if we need to. We can change the density, which will uh, remove points that are super close to each other and just knock those down so there's not so many uh, points right next to each other. Wrong one. And there doesn't seem to be any in here, so uh, we'll just leave that. Now you can also change the color of your points. And right now you're not gonna see any color change because we have this check right here that says use per point colors. And if you remember right in our camera tracker, we went to our uh, little options thing, our options tab, we could change the colors of our points. And these are the colors it's using right now. So if we go back to our point cloud, we're using our per point colors assigned in our camera tracker. But if we uncheck that, we can change the color of our points to whatever color you want. Additionally, we can import a point cloud if this wasn't attached to uh, our camera and we wanted to import a point cloud from somewhere else, we could. Just mind you, the only formats that this will import as is, it'll import as a, a Maya.ma file or a 3ds Max.ase file, a Lightwave.lws file, and a softimage.xsi file. Those are the only file types that our point cloud can import right now. Next, we have make renderable, meaning when we render this out, they'll be seen or not and whether it's unseen by camera. And if we check unseen by camera, that means we doesn't, we don't see it, but it'll still render because we have make renderable right here. Under our transform, we can transform our point cloud. We can uh, rotate it. We can change the pivot if we want, and we can change the scale. Now, if we look at our actual merge, and let's change our camera to perspective, you can see what our point cloud is. So it's basically all these points that were generated by our uh, little camera track. Now, within our menu system here, or our display, there's other things we can do. So let's say, for instance, we wanted to attach something to this point right here and let's change our size up a little bit this is a little large let's say we wanted to select this point and attach something to it the first thing we need to do is we need to be able to select this so if you see we're on our point cloud and we can't select anything but if we view for our merge and go to camera camera 3d we can find the point we want and we can select it. And then we can go into our uh, perspective to make sure we only have one selected, which we don't. We have two. We've got one down here and one right here selected. So let's go ahead and reselect that one. And let's view on our camera again. Now, once we have something selected, whether it's one or multiple things, we can right click, go to our point cloud, and we have different menu items we can do with this point. 
So we can copy the point, which there's our name, Auto 34. We can rename it if we want. We can toggle names on and off. We can toggle the locations on and off. We can publish, unpublish. And what's cool is we can create a shape based off of that point. So we can just select create shape and it just created a new shape on that point. And it named our shape, the name of that point. But we can go in here and turn this to a sphere. Change our uh, radius up so it's smaller. And now we've got uh, that little sphere attached to that point. Let's go ahead and delete these. Now on top of creating a point or creating shapes on our point, we can right click and we can select create locator. So now we've got a locator, which is this node right here created for that. And that's the same as the locator we went over the, uh, the other day. So now you can attach any shapes you want to, and it'll be attached to uh, that. So for instance, if we uh, created a little ellipse, let's bring a merge in down here. Let's merge our ellipse. Let's uh, change it up. It's a little large. So what we can do is we can go to the uh, center of our little ellipse. We can right click, center, connect to, and find our uh, locator, which is auto 34 right here. But I'm gonna tell you a lot of times this is off. So if we connect to our position, you can see it's off. And one problem is, is this isn't connected in our stream. So it really doesn't have a location. So if we disconnect this and place it within our stream, you can see it pops it up there and now it's actually animated. Whereas before it found a location, but it's not animated. It's just sitting there still. So if we pop this down into our stream, now it's following the position of that locator, but it's off. We wanted it right here. So sometimes you may have to uh, add a transform and transform it where you actually want it. And now it's following along that path. So that is the point cloud 3d node. I will see you in the next node breakdown.